Many years ago, I came across a few lines in a book that I connected with. They were, it's easy to judge, but you never know another person's heart, what gives them strength and what breaks them down. I have learned to listen more and speak less. The result has been eye-opening conversations and inspirational moments that I have shared with you right here. Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's Crystal one-on-one -on -one time and we're at Kampala Sheraton Hotel. This show is brought to you by Roketel.com. Make sure you get yourself a Roke Plus account, a package for home. And with me today, I have someone who it's kind of like a hustler, but I think he'll tell you more about his story. He's the founder of Bachiga Nation. It's like a movement, but also an NGO. <laughs> I think officially an NGO, but it's like a movement. <laughs> Owen Bigonde, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank How you are for you? Having me. Good, good, good. How are ah, you? Finally, we sit down. Finally. Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. COVID does good things. <laughs> Well, welcome. It's nice thank to you, have thank you. you. Thank you. Uh huh. Thank How's you it going? Me. How is COVID treating you? Uh, I think it has the good and the bad. So mm. I think, in a good way, it has been perfect. But on the other hand, it's mm. been a struggle. Oh, it's been a struggle. struggle yeah. I feel like you know you had so many things that had started and were picking up. Yes. Um, I think, which is the good thing that we are moving at a very terrific speed. Mm -hmm. But then, because of COVID, we had to sit down and now try to rethink through our decisions. Kind of like bust the bubble that we're in. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're moving in a bubble. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what was going on outside. It so. was like just breakneck speed, right? So now the bubble burst and then you're like, oh, so I was going to hit that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to hit that. I was going to hit that. I think, let me first pull back and we strategize. Okay. But it's been okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We thank God that... March was just recent, but now we are like a month away from the year December, ending. so like... Whew. Do you feel like, like other people are saying 2020 is a write-off for you? Um, I feel that's like a bit intense. Yeah, I think every, most of the people are treating it like a write-off. But I think it's that one stage, uh, like pre-primary. <laughs> Uh, not that I have kids and understand this, but like pre-primary, but before you like go out, there's a few basics you need to touch up. Okay. So I think we are in kindergarten. 2020 has been a kindergarten. Has been okay. Of the new care, world order. Know, yeah. Let's re-strategize. Uh, can we do something from home? Can you walk through a closed space? Mm. Or it has to only be out. Mm -hmm. So I think it has really brought us to a point of realization that the what we thought was possible can actually be impossible and what was impossible can be possible mm -hmm. yeah true That's it's hard to think. it's forced people to really think differently a lot so my question to you yeah owen mm. did you really go to owen nursery school owen road actually owen road nursery <laughs> school is there any connection there in actually names? owen road the, the road was named owen because of us we were staying there. Okay. Does your Owen family Road. have a background in education? No. Okay. No, the, the school wasn't ours. Okay. okay. But uh, we had a home on Owen Road. Mm -hmm. So, and before we went to Owen Road, we were in Kololo. Okay. So, after we moved uh, from uh, where Mediterraneo is right now, the restaurant, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. where we used to stay. Okay. Okay. So, actually, where Mediterraneo is, that was the play. The, mm -hmm. our backyard mm -hmm. then was is it backpackers or something where the flat is mm -hmm. that's where the actual flat was uh -huh. then one time we hosted our cousins and there was a lady selling pancakes across so he crossed the road to go buy pancakes and was knocked down my dad was like there's no way we can have kids and stay next to the road like this so we had to move wow <laughs> that's how we left to go to owen road Okay, and yeah. then a school was then started. Then there was a school and there, so I went to that school. Then, of course, it was next to Chitante. I went to Chitante for a day. Yeah, we walked to school. A day? Yeah. Uh -huh. We went to walk to school, and um, I realized everyone was being dropped. So I told my dad, 
why am I not being dropped? <laughs> Everyone is being dropped. He's like, but you can walk. I was like, mm -mm. you go to a school where you can drop me. <gasps> so we ended up in Shimon. Okay, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> How are you dictating the terms? I think it was just being childish. I think it was just being childish. <laughs> but I think I only did one class. Okay. If I remember correctly, it was just one class. In and that was disturbing you? That was it. It was... It, ah, I couldn't get it. But I don't think my son could tell me that right now and we agree. That's no what way. I'm like, what? <laughs> Especially how we say our parents. Like, There's you no do way. as you're told. Exactly. I have said, I have decided, this is the way forward. But also Were think you the youngest? I'm the first. Hmm. Okay. Of two. But also thing, I think he hadn't paid full, t full fees. That's no. why it was easy for him to move. Because <laughs> <laughs> how would you just move for the sake? I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're the oldest? Yes, I'm and the then oldest. And you have a little sister? Then I have a little sister. Oh, She's okay. called Comfort. Okay. She sings. I taught her how to sing. You me, me, I don't sing, but I taught her how to sing. How did that work? Um, she's successful. <laughs> so the success is because of you. Okay, well done, big brother. Well done. <laughs> no, I just, I can't sing, but I have a very strong ear for, mm -hmm. for music. Yes. Yeah. I, I noticed that you're passionate about all kinds of music events. Yes. As long as there's music, um, I'm there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what kind of child were you? You were the older one. Did yeah. Did you ever have to be the really responsible one? And yeah, everything was, um, oh, and you're doing this, oh, and you're going to do this. Mm -hmm. um, which I think at the, at the time I did not see as a problem okay. or as a challenge. Not a problem, but as a challenge. But later on, uh, if I'm to use the current time now, uh, nothing really goes on around the home. I'm not even at home anymore. But nothing really goes on without... Well, ask Owen what he thinks. Um, my mom will call me to tell me something they discussed and what I think. <laughs> and sometimes I give a deaf ear. I'm like, um, I'll get back to you. Mm. And then completely ignore it. And then call back like after two days. I'm like, oh, did you go through with this? And they said yes. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's... Uh, so I you were part of a lot of the decision making. Yes. And like, they still... Yeah. Mm -hmm, they check were, in with you. I was the one to be responsible for the decision making and my sister was the one to deal with the finances. Oh. So they would be like, uh, so you guys are going for coaching? Oh, and make sure everything is okay. Okay, daddy, comfort, have the money. <laughs> That's a little strange. I mean, so, so you, Did he you, trust you or, or? No, I think he just wanted both of us to, to be have able the clear to, come, uh -huh. to come to a table and agree. Okay. So I'm going to say we do this, but unless she agrees, we can't do it because she has the money. Mm. <laughs> you so, so you couldn't be the bully? No way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, but it was an interesting, I think it was one way to create a bond between me and her because we grew up in a home that was welcoming to so many people. Um, if I remember correctly, I don't think there's a person from my dad's side mm. that has never stayed with us at any one point. Okay. Um, my dad was the first to come to, to, to the city, so everybody else to go wherever they were had to first come home. Some unannounced, mm -hmm. uh, just because the their neighbors in the village so they're like you go you'll find who <laughs> then yeah, as you figure it out <laughs> so we grew up with so many people and it was it was a good experience but mm. also i think it was a challenging one okay. uh, because there was always that division in resource uh, which now as uh, as an adult i feel must have been a lot for my for my parents to take on uh, but somehow there was always joy and happiness in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of many people. Yeah, somehow there was. We didn't lack. Mm -hmm. So yeah. What did your parents good. do? My dad is a mechanical engineer. Ah, 
Ah. And uh, my mom is basically a business lady. Mm -hmm. She has basically done everything from <laughs> shopkeeping to everything else that will come to her mind. She will bring it to the table. So I, I want, want to, to do, do this. this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and by the time she brings it to the table, it's not up for discussion. <laughs> it's like she's bringing it up for you to say yes. When you say Was no, your father aware of this? He would also be told, then he's like, okay, okay, let's, okay, you do. And he supports. <laughs> what Is she do. still like that? No, now she's uh, not so much. Uh, um, I think my dad spoiled her a lot. So she was either home or doing something. So the moment she got bored at home, mm -hmm. then she's going to think of doing something. Mm -hmm. And my dad would be like, okay, you mm -hmm. go. <laughs> it fails, it's okay, you can still come back home. <laughs> so, it's, so it's still almost the same. She, she does uh, what she feels she likes. And uh, I think it's something that I've come to appreciate mm. as a lesson that I've learned from them. They are quite liberal. Uh, my dad will not, you know, so, be so harsh on her on whatever decision she do. He will try and support her to whatever level. Uh, if it doesn't work out, it's okay. At least mm. you tried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's basically it. Okay. Though we started working with my dad when we were young. Working yeah. with him where? He would bring his work back home. Oh. He would work in, on the official job. Okay. Then direct other clients to home to bring their cars home. Then he tells you in the morning, do homework from school. When you come back, there's work to do. So you come <laughs> back, you guys are now working on cars. Okay. Of course, you're not doing anything serious, but you're the one bringing this tool, you're the one putting the light, you're the one, yeah. Okay. So it was quite interesting. So is this where your love for, for, for cars. motor cars <laughs> come yeah. from? Especially, I know, Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, Mercedes-Benz. At yeah. some point, I asked him, okay, what's going on? Because I think every <laughs> profile picture... <laughs> Posts were like Benzes. I'm like, yeah. what? But it's a nice car. Yes, yes. It's a nice car. And there's been this uh, misconception that it's a very expensive car to own. Yet I, in I my think opinion, it used to be, but I now think, not so much. Yeah, I think it's the most affordable vehicle to, move, to use. Um, unless way, you're a reckless. Hold up. What did you say? Yeah, unless you're a reckless driver. Well, if you take care of it, it will take care of you. Yeah, but it needs just the basics. Do the service right, drive right. Mm. Um, some of us uh, learn how to drive on our fast cars. So you don't know how to go through a bad road how. You don't know how to go through a hump. Mm. Um, and because maybe the cars we start with are, are quite friendly to harsh circumstances. So you'll hit a pavement and it will seem okay. <laughs> you'll hit a few bumps, it will seem fine. Miss service one, two times. Mm. So when they tell you you need to do service <laughs> on time, you're like, but I went 10,000 kilometers without service and my car was okay. But why is this one having a problem? Oh, no, no, this car is expensive. Terrible. How can yeah. you miss service? No, it happens. You'll be shocked. I, I mean, the industry of uh, mechanical engineering, but you'll be shocked at how much um, lack of knowledge we have as vehicle owners in this that country. That is crazy. I, mean, I can understand other things being really ignored, don't. but... It's, it's, it's amazing. A person will tell you, okay, why don't you just change the oil? You don't, change, you don't need to change the oil filter. And I'm wondering, but the oil goes through the oil filter. <laughs> <laughs> so if the oil filter, if you're removing the oil because it's bad, it's mm. old, that means the oil filter is also... Yes. Just use it like you do the normal sieve. Mm. If you're making juice or making tea, the moment it's clogged, yes. you clear it up. Yes, of course. The same thing as a filter. So if it's clogged, like, no, just do that. I'll go for now. So it's... No, that's a good point. I was talking to someone else mm. about the same thing. We're yeah. so indisciplined, even in terms of how we maintain our cars. Yeah. And then we complain when they break down well, and they have down. issues. Yes. And if, you, if the, they... It's a good thing to us because mm. it makes us money. <laughs> um, yes. But if you look at it in the grand scheme of things, you can actually keep your maintenance on the car to under a million a year. If, if there's something small, work on it. Immediately. Because everything is 
joined together. Yeah. So once it starts here, if you don't work on it, it will strain this other side. Because everything on a car is a pair, apart from the steering. Mm. But even the steering still goes to the <laughs> two tires. So if you look at it, one side will have an issue. If you don't work on it, it will strain the other side, and the other side will also have an issue. So you have to work on both. Mm. So it's easier if you work on one before you work on both. So it's, but we don't look at it that way. Mm -hmm. And it's good for business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're being honest, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. let me take you back to school. Yeah. You refused to go to Chitande. Yeah. And you went to which school? Shimoni. Shimoni. Demonstration. Okay. Currently Kingdom Kampala. And you were being <laughs> dropped. Yeah, we were being dropped. Then, of course, after some time, the dropping ended. <laughs> Dad could not make it. We were working late, so we had to figure out a way of living. Mm. But then, at that time, we had grown up a bit, so it was, it was okay. <laughs> okay. Then we started eating transport money. So we'd sit on the car, small thing in like in the I don't know if people still do that. I've not seen it. Okay, the times I use the taxis, okay, I don't know how, how long that is, but mm. the times I would not see kids at the Yeah, I that think, car, what's it called? That little the kameme. Mm -hmm. I think our kids these days are too cool or they don't understand kameme. I don't know. No, but someone is telling me they still do it and actually it's a problem because the kids pay and they make them sit there. Oh yes, no. Yes. Okay now that's wrong. That's wrong, right? That's wrong. You can't blame the kid for Before eating. Before it was about, you know, some... You eat musibatai, they're always outside the gate. <laughs> so <laughs> you'd eat your musibatai and blast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where did you so, go for secondary? Secondary, I did... Uh, oh, I was a tourist in school. Mama. I did... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I was quite a tourist. Hey. I did St. Joseph's Nagalama. Okay. Then... Uh, I got indefinitely suspended in my senior two. What did you do? I cheated exams for senior fours. Huh? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, I hacked the, um, the stuff from computers, from the computer lab. Yeah. They were teaching us computer science. So we had, you try and... Put I it don't in think practice. most people know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that is not the right reasoning, my dear. It felt cool. Do you know big boys coming uh -huh. to you and being like, man, they told us you can do this. Check for us. Mm. And you want to be in the big boy club. So if they're like, eh, what do you want? Let's go. Yeah, so um, one afternoon, we are there and all of them will like crowd you because they all want to get a piece of what is there and stuff. I don't even remember what the, what the, what the subject was. But it was, it was not complicated because it was, it was, um, it was a land. So, uh, and I don't think there were no passwords. So it was very easy to move from, to just look for the work station, go through the work station to the different, uh, then you pick a teacher, pick the, it was, it was quite easy. Mm. Because so there was it like was no not, security. Yeah, really. it was really no security and it was open and I don't think they ever expected anything <laughs> like that to happen. So yeah, like lock the staff room and you're yeah, done, so right? So me I just went to the computer lab, log in, use the LAN, got it. It was really no brainer. But just because I just loved those tech stuff. Then yeah. Mm -hmm. So and the time ended. How was the news taken? Of course my parents are not that impressed. Mm -hmm. They did not understand what exactly that was, but my dad was like, but thank God you're even over becoming sick there. So at least I think you didn't, I think you just didn't, your body didn't like that school. <laughs> okay, your dad is like, <laughs> he's like in there with you the whole way. The whole way. What? So I was like, all right. 
so when you were getting like malaria a lot? Yeah, I would get sick a lot of times. I think throughout my senior one to my senior two, my best place was the sick bed. I got sick so many times. Mm. I didn't even understand what was going on. It was mm. one month, you're, you're fine, then like two weeks, you're off. It was really not cool. Okay. It was nice that you would always go back home, but it was not cool mm. at all, yeah. And then uh, from there, I went to Lakeside. Yeah, I went to Lakeside. Okay. In Lozira. Uh, my dad uh, had uh, one of his in-laws study there. So it was like, you know what, since he's been very far, bring him here in town. Well, you can monitor him, mm -hmm. what? So I got to, to a school. It was okay. It was a lot of fun. Um, then come uh, senior four. Uh, during, uh, I think it was like two weeks to exams. Mm -hmm. So you had that point where they could facilitate as well. They would bring people to like take you through and uh, they are helping you to get ready for exams. So this one time I had a problem with um, Anya. So it would disturb, even in primary it was a big problem. So sometimes it would come all of a sudden mm. and it would really, really disturb me. Mm. So I had those moments. So I called in the morning. I used the chaplain at the time because we had the school chaplain. I asked him, kindly call my parents, tell them, because it was the station. Tell them when they're coming, let them come with some medicine because this thing has started and I have like two extra exams. I don't want to have issues. Mm. So I stayed in the dormitory. So the warden comes in, finds us, we are dodging, bounces us, takes us to the dose. Uh, I explained to the dose I'm not fine. And actually, I've even asked my parents to come with some medicine. Mm. My dose is like, okay. Mm -hmm. He plays it cool. So I'm like, I think I've settled this. Uh, my parents come, they even meet the dose, they talk to him. Come Wednesday, we are in class. Uh, the dose was teaching us mathematics. So he comes and he's like, you, I'm not teaching you. And some other two guys. But go and wait, go wait for me at, the start, at my office. Okay. I go wait. He comes like, you guys missed, uh, I've forgotten what they used to call it. Let me say facilitation on Sunday. So I'm going to punish you. I told him, how? And he was aware. He I had talked to your parents. I gave you my reason. You met my parents. You didn't bring it up. Now they are gone. You want to punish me? For what? <laughs> what are you talking about? He's like, I either punish you or I expel you. What? So I'm like, I think maybe the, the latter could be possible. Because you're not going to punish me. So I refuse. Um, so he gets. Uh, the next day was General Assembly. General Assembly is on Thursday. So I'm there we are having a General Assembly, and then the deputy academic says, The following students come to my office. He was among the students. So after lunch, we go to his office, hands me a suspension letter with like five reasons as to why I'm being suspended. I was about to ask you, are you sure that was the only reason, Owen? There were like five other reasons. So I'm like, okay. So we go, uh, my dad at the time was working with Victoria Motors. So it was just at Meat Parkers. So from Luzira to Meat Parkers is <laughs> one taxi. I reach there. So he sees me like, I thought I'd totally be here. I thought we gave you whatever you need on Sunday. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I've been suspended. Why? Uh, I'm s apparently on Sunday I missed. It's like, but you said, weren't you not feeling well? And I'm like, yes, but they don't seem to look at the reasons. Like, first enter the car, we go back. <laughs> I'm like, now this is drama. We go back to school. So he sits. So the first reason was uh, I dodged. That. Mm -hmm. Then I dodged classes. Was that true? No. How? The second reason. Uh, I disrespect uh, teachers. I have no notes. Was uh, that true? Did you have notes? I'm I asking notes. you. I had notes. So my dad is like, all right, let's go step by step. Dodges. Uh, dodged uh, facility thing on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So he asks, I was here on Sunday. I received a phone call 
at about 9 in the morning and I was told that he was sick and needed medication, which I brought. Mm -hmm. And I believe if the teacher concerned is the one I met on that day, he knew about it. So how is that, how is that a reason for you to suspend him? He's like, okay, baby. He's like, okay, help me with your red pen. This is cleared. <laughs> Next, Dodgers classes. He's like, do you do roll call here? Mm. Deputy was like, yes. Could you call the class teacher to come with the record book? <laughs> of course, that's close to impossible. There's mm. no way even the teachers themselves will have those many records. Yeah. Sometimes they don't make roll call. They also don't do it. Mm -hmm. So the class teacher comes. Of course, she realizes. So I, I think the only reason she gave me a pass mm. was because she just wanted to save her ass. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> she's like, she brings, so where there was no tick, it was either S, mm -hmm. which was sick, or H, which was home, of the records she brought. Ah. So my dad was like, so he attends class. That is off. Apart from when you are sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that is off. The next one was, uh, <clears throat> you have no notes. Told me, Owen, don't you have two suitcases? One is for your things, the other one is for books. Bring your, your suitcase here. It was impossible, practically impossible, to go through all those books to prove a point that you have no notes. You get it? So I think my dad was trying to show them that, look here, you're actually having no base mm. to have these, these uh, reasons for expulsion. So he said, he brings the books. Of course, they can't go through everything. Mm. It was coming to six. Mm. The deputy was ready. Was it tired, was becoming too defeated. much for him. He's like, Okay, then that one. <laughs> <laughs> so the last one was he disrespects teachers. Mm. Now that was the big contention. Okay. Like, but he should have accepted to be punished. What? Oh, My dad was like, now why no. did you? He's like, I punished for what? If he has no wrong word. So the was like, you know what? Let's make it easy. Yeah? Let's just let him be home just for a week. He comes back ready to do exams mm. just let, let, let's just okay just <laughs> and let life go on let life go on mm -hmm. so my dad was like so he has not been expelled he's just going home <laughs> like okay like now have it written <laughs> i like your dad so you had your back you know many other parents yo, will just be my like my way back home why? Ah, la, 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 oh, so la. that was for there what was wrong with you being punished a few canes <laughs> i had work <laughs> I was like, hold on, who said that you want? No, 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 that no, was no, for no, the no. public. Now, deal one on one. He's like, no, 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 no. Were, they, were the kings going to kill you? Don't they beat you at home? I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I you know, went back and, you know, did the exams, they were fine. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. That's an interesting. I mean, because most parents would be like, you know, whatever the teacher said, no. okay. No, I think he, he didn't want, he, he knew it was going, if, I would have felt bad, mm. yeah? yeah, if he had sided with them. Because I would have felt like, come on, I've not done anything wrong. If I had done something wrong, then maybe there's reason, but I've not done something wrong. So you come and you also side in with them, so I'm like, it's okay. But at the, at the end of the day, he told me, uh, going back home, I learned that sometimes it's easier to endure something In the just for the, for the bigger picture. Mm. Because now if you look at, I wasted his time, uh, I wasted my own time, a whole week home, yet I had a week to exams. Really, it was really not called for. Mm. I was just being big-headed for nothing. So it was kind of a lesson as well mm. that he made clear that I understood. Okay. Moving forward, yeah. Mm. Then after that, went to went to East High. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and no issues at East High. Uh,